Hey everybody, how's it going? Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're gonna to be talking about the two things that you don't wanna to say to a coin dealer, and really, that you don't want to be doing when you're even involved with coin dealers. So hopefully, this is gonna be some good perspective for, mostly for beginners. If you're thinking about maybe selling your coin collection, you inherited a collection, you're not sure what to do next, and one of the options is always to take it to some coin dealers, and I would say definitely don't take it to one, take it to a multitude so that you get a good range. You can kind of compare offers. If you're just looking even for a quick sale, I think it's worth spending four or five more hours shopping it around. I mean, I help people all the time who go to one or two coin dealers, um, even near me, and they get offered way less than what I end up paying them for the coins, and I'm still able to do a good profit. So um, it's, it's something that will help you um, to not say these two things. So with that being said, let's get into the video. All right, so the first thing that you never wanna to say to a coin dealer is that you won't expect to be paid list price for the coins, or you know this is worth 150, why am I not getting paid 145 for it? I mean, I think that we'll get into the idea that a lot of coin dealers are, are trying to you know pull a fast one on or offer quite aggressively on your coins, but at the same time, uh, it's quite important to know kind of where in the totem pole the dealers are. Um, in terms of how they can offer on your coinage. So especially if you're just walking into a shop, um, they, you know, I'm presuming that they are a brick and mortar shop, they have a location. So whether they are renting it from somebody or even if they own the location themselves, A, they could be renting it to somebody else and making the rental income, but B, they're paying for the air conditioning, they're paying for insurance. There's a lot of costs with doing business um, and especially if they have their own shop, there are even more costs doing business with that. So they're gonna have to make some money on the deal. Um, and going back to the totem pole thing, so most of the time, you know, you have the collection that you may have inherited or you're trying to sell. Um, you can have the option of selling directly uh, to consumers. It's gonna be quite time intensive. And it's something that I recommend if you know how to sell coins, you know, you can certainly get the most money uh, for your collection, but it will require some expertise, which I think it's good to have some basic expertise, but uh, you know, very few people, uh, if they never were interested in, the, in coins, they get handed, you know, five grand worth of coins. Most of the time, it's a little bit more complicated where, uh, you know, putting that on eBay is gonna present a challenge. And it can definitely be worth it in some cases, but often it's best to bring somebody in who is not you uh, so that you can, you know, navigate it better. And, you know, if you sell on eBay, which I do sometimes, a lot of dealers do, they're also taking risks. So they have to, um, you know, the coins might not get there. Sometimes they deal with a bad buyer who kind of tries to pull a fast one on them and use eBay or a different platform to basically scam the person selling the coins. Um, and, uh, you know, they have to spend the time taking photos of it, making nice descriptions, making the listing. When it sells, you have to ship within a few days. Um, there's supplies involved in you know sending out the shipments, so it's it's not a super easy process. So these coin dealers need to make some money, um, and the the question is you know at what point are they making enough money where um, you know when do you want to get a good deal, right? So um, uh, you know it's it's important to realize that if they you know say you have a thousand dollars of silver. Um, they are probably going to offer. That's something that's super liquid. They might be able to immediately sell it for, call it nine seventy-five. So they might offer like eight twenty on it uh, and make one hundred fifty bucks. Uh, or maybe they're offering. Maybe it's easier to sell than that. Maybe maybe uh, you know. I know one example is if you have like a thousand silver eagles. That's like a, you know, call it thirty thousand dollar purchase. Is a little bit more than that. But uh, I've I've known dealers who will only get a few percentage points, maybe 2%, make 600 bucks because they know that they can sell it uh, in advance of them buying it and they're just kind of linking you to the end buyer. Um, but also, also oftentimes is the case, you know, you have a very collectible thousand dollar coin, but it's gonna sit on eBay for a long time. So, you know, people have, they need to, you know, turn over their inventory. They can't have all of it sitting there and, and not available to buy new coins with. So maybe they'll, you know, try to pay 600 bucks for it and let it sit for a thousand, or maybe they can they think they can sell it pretty quickly at 750. Um, there's certainly a lot of coins, and that, that doesn't sound all that unfair to me. You know, if, it, if they know that they can sell it for 900, a lot of coin dealers will try to get like a 30% cut or so. I mean, I think one thing people throw out 15 to 20% a lot. In my experience, most dealers are looking to make a little bit more money than that, just for your reference, but 
Um, you know, you, you want to be educated on the different types of material you have. Understand that by going to a coin dealer, you're not deal, you're not getting the highest price because a there's like 10% in eBay fees. So if they sell that coin on eBay for 800 bucks that they paid 600 for, they're already going to lose. You know, call it if they have a really nice account, call it 75 bucks or something. So the margins shrink quite a bit. But um, that that's kind of how you need to approach that. Um, and, and knowing the right types of material to sell to coin shops and the right types of material to put for yourself on eBay, uh, that can also be a big topic, something I should probably do in a separate video, but you're really paying for the ease of just setting it all off. Now, there's a lot of dishonest coin dealers who maybe, um, you know, one thing I see often is when people aren't educated, you have like 10 main co coins, call them the dealer's paying 100 bucks each, he'll get 150 for them uh, each. Um, but then there's some kind of stuff off to the side and it basically just gets lumped in. It's like, I'll pay you 50 for the rest. And then, you know, sometimes there's some really good coins in there that kind of the, you didn't realize had a lot of value. That's why it's important to kind of go through, make sure that you, you don't have anything super good. Um, and again, it's, it's challenging, right? If somebody has, if they're paying, you know, call it 1500 bucks a month for rent, there's probably a lot higher in a lot of places. And then they're paying an employee or something. They have to make money too. Uh, but there's there's no excuse, you know, if, if you have a coin that's worth 500 bucks sitting in that pile um, that they're not even looking closely at, you know, maybe you should have gone and found out it was 500 bucks so that you could bring it up and sell it for 300 or, some, or sell it for 200 uh, instead of having it just kind of get factored into the rest of the deal. Now, the other thing that I would say not to tell a coin dealer is that you have no idea what your coins are worth or you don't know anything about coins, right? I think that a, um, you don't want to kind of give away your position that you really have no idea what you're looking at. I think, you know, if you have a coin collection, there's you're kind of personally responsible for spending an hour or two researching coins, maybe spending 10 hours. I mean, if you have a $5,000 coin collection, I would say it, it's really on you to do the research so that you don't sell it for 800 bucks at the coin shop or, you know, even, you know, 1500, 2000, it, there, there's a lot, you know, if you do the hourly rate, most people are pretty happy working at like a 50 plus dollars an hour rate, especially if, it, you know, the coins were handed to you from or passed down or given by somebody you care about, where you don't want to just effectively throw away that money. So I think that um, you shouldn't not know anything about coins going into it. But if that is the case, you know, there's a lot of good, you know, if somebody tells me that, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll treat them fairly, but, um, you know, people, people should tread carefully because it's like, you don't want to show that there's blood in the water and then you got the sharks swimming around excited that there's some easy prey. You know, I feel like if somebody says, look, I've, you know, it, you should be able to go in saying I've done some research, you know, I'm not exactly sure on how this is priced, but I see this item. It's kind of rare. It's selling for eBay on eBay for $70 each. And I've got 10 of them. And, uh, you know, maybe it's an uncommon item. You say, you, you know, you understand the idea that things are, you know, they have to make margins and it's challenging to sell these individual like rare foreign currency, for example, for uh, paper money. You know, there's not tons of buyers on that stuff, but there's still some pretty rare notes. So if you have those rare coins, you know, I, or notes, you know, I, I would say do the research. And because so much of the foreign currency, this is like a, a big way that I see it or currency in general. Um, people don't really do any research into and assume that, you know, they're happy to get double what it, the face value is. Um, and, and so much of it is actually quite common, but then there's also a fair amount of rare stuff. So, you know, knowing that difference, I would say that that's important. And then, um, you know, it just, the wrong people, there, there's enough kind of shady people within coins. It, it's, uh, you know, it's a buying and selling flipping business. So, um, you know, people are trying to flip stuff and if they realize that they can pick it up for nothing, you know, it's like a garage sale, finding it, the uh, batch of coins where somebody thinks it's worth, you, you know, their hundred dollar coins they assume is are, are worth nothing. I mean, if you bring it into somebody and, and pretend that, or, or even you think that they're all worth nothing, uh, you know, there's nothing preventing you from having even called your friend that knows. I get, I get calls from my friends all the time and I, I help them, you know, maybe I'll buy it from them or maybe I'll just say, look, like these four coins are each worth five hundred dollars each so so why you know you know that i'm not even going to buy them because you don't want to sell but make sure that you have them clearly labeled as being valuable so that if you ever do go to sell um or if you're in the situation you just know what's there so i think that there's some responsibility on your part you know i don't think um you know it, it, 
it's it's like it's real life like people are always trying to get the upper hand so i think that just going the extra step and not being in the position to tell a coin dealer you know nothing um find somebody to take a look at the coins often that's posting on a forum i get like hundreds of emails every day uh, ask people asking me to look at their coins i can't do all of it but if there's clear photos i can generally direct people to a good place to post that uh, so that the rest of the community can give feedback um or, you know, again, just having that mentality of taking it to three different coin shops, even if that means spending two Saturdays doing it, so that you know, you know, you didn't know anything going in, or you just did a little research online, and then you go to all these different coin shops, and now you actually do know what they are, because two of the three told you that this item was valuable, and this the, the third one didn't mention anything about the, you know, the few items that were valuable over here, but they point out that you're... Morgan Dollar has a CC mint mark uh, that the other two didn't look closely at. And, and so now you have just a much better overall picture and understanding of what you have. Because if a coin dealer knows that they can sell something the next day for five grand um, and you go in and say, look, you know, I know that you can do this. How about I sell it to you for thirty six hundred or something like that? Um, you know, that they might have offered twenty five hundred to begin with because uh, they didn't you know, they would have done a little more research and it's going to sit and, and, you know, they, uh, you know, they, they put some effort in, but if, if you are able to present a good case for here's how you value the coins and you think you're giving them money, they know that they can make money quickly. That's where the margin shrink, that's going to be the best outcome. So that, that's my advice. Let me know if you think something differently. It's just been on my mind and I wanted to kind of put that out there and hear what other people have to say on the topic. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like, comment, and definitely subscribe to the channel and connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I also have a website, treasuretownyt.com, where you should go so that you can learn more about coins as well as what's happening on the channel and possibly find a place to sell your coins and collectibles. I also want to talk about some of my other projects like coinmeltprice.com, which shows precious metals prices as well as the melt values of coins containing those precious metals, both U.S. and world. I also have coinsmetalscards.com, which will develop into a full marketplace, as well as a new source for coins, metals, cards, as the name might suggest. And then treasuretowncoins.com, which long term will be my coin dealing entity separate from the channel. And lastly, whatsthegrade.com, which will be a stickering service for already certified collectibles where you can get a approval or verification of the grade on the holder. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you on some of my other videos.